मैले बाग्यर रोज को मयाले मलाई धो इन द हार्ट अफ नेपाल लिव्स अ ट्राइब अफ हनी हंटर्स द ग्रुंग्स दे आर द लास्ट ह्युमन्स बिफोर ऑन 8000 मीटर माउंटेन पीक एंड देयर विलेज इज सराउंडेड बाय थिक जंगल इट्स सीक्रेट्स अ मिस्ट्री टू ऑल बट द लोकल्स संसार भुली One month a year, giant Himalayan bees, the biggest bees in the world, come to gather nectar from poisonous flowers, giving the honey they make certain medicinal, aphrodisiac and hallucinogenic properties. The gurungs take outrageous risks to collect the honey from the cliffside hives. But they've developed an almost mystical rapport with the bees, which enables them to work without any protective clothing. The precious liquid has to be eaten with great care to avoid serious intoxication. My name is Raphael. I'm going to meet the tribe to try and find out more about this magic honey. The Gurung sell the honey at a local market. They've told me how to find their village. On the way, I meet Deepak and Kuma, two friends who are in contact with the tribe. They've proposed to come with me to act as translators. The Gurungs are almost cut off from the outside world. They live two days' walk from the nearest road. Originally from Tibet, in the Middle Ages they came to this valley, dominated by one of the highest mountains in the world. A hundred and fifty villagers live here, including many elderly but very healthy people, and a good number of children who attend the village school. Hives of domesticated bees, which are more docile and twice as small as the wild bees, are built into the walls. The honey can be collected from inside the houses. The bees have even colonized some rather unusual places. The Gurungs are almost entirely self-sufficient. They grow vegetables, corn and rice. The village mill turns the cereal into flour. Various wooden objects are carved and sculpted with a kukri, the emblematic Nepalese knife. The villagers raise goats, cows and sheep, whose wool is used to make clothes. Some of which will be sold at the market. Some also fish and hunt for deer using rifles loaded with a ramrod and they stay on the lookout for bears which could attack their flocks or the village children men and women of all ages regularly work on communal tasks like here for the building of a new path maoist dissidents who took control of the valley make sure everyone takes part in the work necessary for developing the community the gurungs are reserved and discreet but their good humor and joie de vivre is infectious <laughs> At dawn, the village gets ready for a honey hunting trip. Two men prepare the ropes required for climbing the cliffs. They set out to join the rest of the team.
the hunters meet up. Noba, Kersheng, the oldest hunter, Nandala, and Dali. As they leave the village, a surprise guest shows up. A member of the Maoist guerrilla from a neighboring village who says he's come to ensure we're not going to take honey from communal hives. At first, he wants to stop us from going. His presence here is also a publicity exercise. He wants to make sure the young Nepalese communist logo on his T-shirt appears in the film. Discussions are a little tense, but calm. Finally, the young Maoist agrees to let us leave. Kershen cut some young bamboo stems, which will be used to make a ladder. Day, we arrive at the bottom of the cliff. The men prepare a camp. And a team sets out on reconnaissance. On the cliff face, a black mass can be made out, and so the honey hunt can begin. How old were you when you started hunting for honey? I began when I was 20, and I do it every year. Today I'm 60, so that's 40 years. My father and grandfather did it before me, so I was always curious about it. What's the first thing to be done? First of all, there's a ritual called a puja. Puja is a Hindu term referring to a religious ritual where incense is burned and prayers are offered. The Gurungs are Buddhists, but have retained a form of animism in their relations with nature. They invoke certain spirits, in this case a forest spirit, to whom they offer the life of a cock, a sacrifice that will guarantee a successful honey harvest. We do this ritual to avoid problems, misfortune and accidents. We have to summon the spirit of the forest because it has a soul and we don't want to offend it. We pray twice 
once here and once down below. We've had the same traditions for a long time. Everywhere we go, the traditions are the same. When we hunt the honey, the bees don't give in easily. It's a real combat. It's a bit like we were taking their children. We make this offering to be protected and so that no one falls. So what effects does this honey have? The effects of the honey? Oh, you'll see. The sacrificed cock will also serve as a meal. Noba prepares it while the others make the rope ladder. Rungs are fitted into ropes made from braided bamboo. They are then fixed using bamboo shoots. The hunters prepare bundles of green leaves, which they will light to smoke out the bees. The ladder is drenched with water, so it isn't damaged by the flames. The meal is ready, a cock curry, and the team is soon ready to begin hunting. Nandalal has chosen a solid route to fix the ladder. A safety mechanism is connected too. A wooden structure is installed to hold a wicker basket for filtering the honey. The hunters will split up. Kershing will climb the ladder and cut holes in the wax using sharpened bamboo spatulas. Lukba, Nandalal and Dali will stay at the top and raise and lower the baskets of honey. They have to light a fire to protect themselves from attacks by the bees. Nobo will descend to the cliff bays to smoke out the hives. Kershing performs a final ritual as he lays out leaves on the ground. We follow Noba. When we arrive, the bees adopt a very specific behavior, defense waves. Raising their wings in turn, they create a kind of wave around the hive, a visual alarm signal to any predator or imprudent invader. Before the bees attack, 
Noba lights a fire and the smoke rises along the cliff face. Despite the smoke, the bees are aggressive and try to get into our clothes. Their legs are unbelievably powerful. As we have neither gloves nor a mask, the hunters have warned us. In the case of an attack, we mustn't move. The slightest gesture only provokes the bees. Kershing climbs up wearing just shorts and a t-shirt. His confidence is astounding, and his mystical rapport with the bees is clear as he finds himself facing a furious swarm. A flaming bundle of leaves is lowered, and Kershing tries to use it to divert the bees' attentions. The bees see the smoke as a sign of fire, and the hunter's presence becomes a secondary problem for them. Okay. Deepak has been stung on the head and decides to move away. According to him, being stung by a Himalayan bee, Apis dosata laboriosa, is no more painful than an ordinary bee sting. Kershing will sometimes remain immobile for several minutes to make the bees less aggressive. To keep his hands free, he has attached bamboo stakes to his arms. A basket is lowered on a rope. He pushes it under the holes in the wax and using the stakes, cuts out several kilos of honey which fall into the basket. The other team members simply haul the basket to the cliff top. The harvest demands perfect coordination, but the tribe's history has been marked by several fatal accidents. Each cliff bears the name of a dead hunter inscribed on the rock. Kershing drops a block of honey. It falls at my feet. Surprised, I slip and fall. But fortunately, the vegetation breaks my fall. Kershing climbs back up. He hasn't been stung. We try to climb back up too. It's a good harvest, and everyone is safe and sound. <laughs> A shepherdess has joined the group. She carefully tastes a piece of wax filled with honey. She knows the toxicity varies according to the season. I'm invited to taste it too. The initial effects are immediate. The honey contains ditopenic alcohol, a toxin that causes inebriety, similar to the effects of absinthe. Deepak seems to appreciate it One more. and invites me to take a second taste, but I'm too busy filming and decline. Plus, the dose suggested by the hunters is only three teaspoons worth. The honey has soothing qualities, and the Gurungs use it as an aphrodisiac. They consume a spoonful every morning, as it helps with their immunity systems, hence the name honey for a long life or immortality although a higher dose can affect the vision and even induce hallucinations. The honey also has healing qualities, more than normal honey. The filter enables impurities such as dead bees and insects to be removed. A few blocks of dried wax are cut and taken to feed the animals. Others are left in place.
When they reach a water hole, the men wash off the sticky honey. It's a moment of respite before the long walk back to the village. The hunters can't delay any longer, as evening is approaching rapidly. Dali brings up the rear when there's a problem. Deepak feels ill and can't walk any further. What's going on? He doesn't feel well. He can't walk. How come? Because of the honey. How much has he eaten? A good handful. Oh, that's much too much. I'll go and get the others. Deepak is nauseous and can no longer stand up. Suddenly, he has convulsions and loses consciousness. Kumar decides to carry him to try and rejoin the group. An analysis of the honey reveals it comes from a ponticum rhododendron, whose red flowers contain grayanotoxins. These give the honey its toxicity, although the bees themselves are not affected. Everything's spinning. A honey overdose can cause cardiac and respiratory irregularities, some of which have proved fatal. Deepak is suffering from paresthesia, with unusual sensations in his fingertips. A woman from the village arrives and learns of what has happened. Her name is Yamu. <laughs> Nandalal and Noba have given their equipment to the shepherds and come back to help Deepak. <laughs> I'll carry you on my back. <laughs> The men don't appear to be worried and take the situation with good humor. Some are clearly a little intoxicated. Deepak starts vomiting again. The men have to leave, as at night the forest becomes a hunting ground for bears and tigers. In ancient times, Greek and Roman armies suffered the same fate as Deepak after raiding honey from a Turkish village surrounded by rhododendrons. They became drunk, and some fell over or lost their minds. The honey became known as red honey or crazy honey.
At last we reach the village. Deepak will be treated with medicinal plants. You okay? The next day, Deepak is better and gets away with just a nasty headache. Before leaving, we feast on some local dried and braised game meat. We leave the Gurungs filled with respect for these simple, discreet heroes. Deepak and Kumar take some honey, which they have promised to consume with moderation. <laughs> <laughs>